Today when we talk about the rotator cuff, there are four muscles that you should know. The subscapularis, the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, and the teres minor. So let's get into it. I have a couple of different balls that you could choose from. The lacrosse ball that we talked about the other day, and this is a hard knobbed ball about the same size. Today I will be using this one. Externally, some of these muscles will do either external or internal rotation, and looking at the person from the front, you can see internal would be toward the midline, external would be away from. Here I've drawn your scapula or your shoulder blade. This is a little wing that comes out and articulates with the collarbone in front, so it wraps around, forms a little hook there, that actually forms the top of your shoulder. Now right in here is a little groove on top where your supraspinatus sits, comes underneath that and attaches to your humerus. This is another little groove or fossa where your infraspinatus will come up and attach to the top of your arm. Again, your scapula and your humerus, the first bone of your arm. The supraspinatus lies right in this fossa. A little dip comes under the acromion process and attaches right here to the top of your shoulder. The infraspinatus takes up this dip and attaches right under it, top of that shoulder. The teres minor attaches right along the out side underneath the infraspinatus and comes up right in here also. So you can see how your supraspinatus will pull your arm out, abduction, the teres minor and the infraspinatus will rotate your arm back. This is a view of your scapula from the front of your body. So your rib cage would be in front of this right here. But this little fossa or dip is where your subscapularis will lie. This is the acromion again, and you have another little notch that comes out that's called your coracoid process. Here I've drawn your subscapularis, very straightforward, sub meaning underneath, scapularis, um, the scapula. And it takes up the entire area under there, comes out right along your humerus the first part of your arm in the front and outside edge. This is a front view of the subscapularis, so your rib cage would be sitting in front of it like this. For the moment, I'm going to use a knobbed ball and we'll lay on the floor and place it right in here. So you can see that my shoulder blade, the edge of my shoulder blade only comes to right here. So the majority of the area I will be working is right in there. About here is where the teres stops. Okay, so I don't need to go too far under the armpit. I'm going to put that right in this area. Right. And to stabilize that ball right there slowly bring my arm down until I feel some pressure applied on it. I can rotate my body into the ball that applies a little bit more pressure. Continue to do some circles and you want to make sure that you are not leveraging too much or tweaking your Shoulder, shoulder joint. Okay, found a really sore spot. Now I can rock my body up and down on that. I can rotate my arm. I can do some circles right in there. Nice deep breath. All the way out. reach through my elbow and pull back in. Just those small movements allow me to readjust in the best spot.
spot possible because a lot of times right in here will just be a, a very small area again kind of a pinpoint area and I might take a deep breath and hold that I can hold it for 20-30 seconds here now you can see with that knobbed ball I did leave some light marks on myself these are okay they're red you want to make sure that you're not digging in there too deeply and agitating the skin wearing um, a tight fitting long sleeve might help that but for now I want to show you the actual muscle placement when we're doing the subscapularis muscle that will be on this side of the shoulder blade so when we grab in here you can only actually feel a really little piece of the subscapularis. We'll gently grab with the finger pads and squeeze this way. Now if it feels nervy or tingly, that may last for a couple seconds. Otherwise, let go and reposition. Okay? So you can see right in my in my shoulder here, I'll grab on the back side of my shoulder, put my thumb right on the armpit. Nice deep breath. All the way out. Slowly sink in, pressing harder with the fingers on the back of the shoulder and gently sinking in with that thumb. Okay, found a nice spot right in here. Now, as I grab that, I would gently rotate, slowly rotate that arm up leaving your elbow where it is rotate up again that elbow where it is you can slide that elbow up and it will feel like a little bit of a little bit stingy maybe because of the fascia in there opening up Take that thumb and just slide up the inside. Okay. Elbow up and down. And again, we'll just knead and slide up with that thumb. Now a good way to see if that subscapularis is allowing you to come all the way back to its full length is by letting your elbow rest on the floor of the bed and bringing the back of your hand all the way to touch the floor. If it's still way up here, you know that your subscapularis is pretty tight. And don't expect yourself to get all that motion all at once, but just allowing the back of that hand to weight down will stretch it also doing these massage techniques right here will help that. Hey guys, I've shown you a couple ways that you can help that internal and external rotation of the rotator cuff. If you have any more questions, feel free to let me know. And you guys have a great day. Thanks.